Hello scrappy peeps! Welcome back to my channel and today I have a process video for the cut shop. If you follow me on Instagram or Facebook or the cut shop account, you will have heard the announcement. I'm so thrilled that Ashley asked me to join the team. And today I'm going to be using Lucky Stars. It's a background cut file. I cut it at roughly 11 inches. It's a little less than 11 inches. And I've been into really bright cut file designs lately. A lot of other people have been too. It's just so much fun to do bright patterns and colors, a lot of rainbow lately. But because this is a star pattern, I like to kind of keep that into muted tones, maybe whites and yellows and blues. And I've also been really digging the combination of grays and yellows. I'm not usually a yellow person, but it seems to be a color that's being introduced for spring quite a lot. I just bought a couple of yellow shirts, my first ever, because I don't usually wear yellow. And I think this fascination also kicked off for me from the January Felicity Jane kit, which is where this vellum is from. The mustard yellow is fabulous and I've been dying to use it. It came in this pack in the Jill collection. I considered the other vellums in the pack as well because I knew I wanted to play with transparency in this layout. I'm gonna do something a little different that I haven't done with a cut file in quite a while. I'm gonna use it as a stencil. At least the first thought I had was to use it as a stencil. But you'll see how my design evolved. First, I've been pulling product that I might want to try. Those really bright foiled stars are from Studio Calico. They're some Felicity Jane products. That's what I'm rifling through mostly. And uh, to the left, you see something that's from Freckle Font. I don't think I end up using any of that. Since the vellum has flowers on it, I was considering using some floral elements on this design, layering up some pre-made die cuts, or even cutting some sprigs and layering a whole bunch of those around the photo. But I really wanted to showcase the background cut file, so I'm just gonna concentrate on the technique for that. After moving my photo around to see where I could optimally place it, I decided to tear the cut file in half so that I could use part of it as a stencil and the other as a layered cut file. There was a question of where to tear and what part I was gonna stencil. I decided to do a horizontal design because of my daughter's outstretched hands. For the stencil portion, I tested a couple things. Some whip spackle, which is like gesso, but it was thick, stark white, and I wanted something soft and translucent. I also tested gold paint, and I just didn't like that tone, so I'm gonna do misting. You've been watching my extensive setup because I don't mist very often. I usually splatter, but I wanted to cover everything so I didn't get it all over the place. I'm gonna fast forward the cleanup, and here we are with it mostly dry. I cut my vellum with my Tim Holtz guillotine trimmer, and then I'm gonna tear the bottom to have a little bit of a ruffled edge. That Shine Like the Stars is from the new Dear Lizzie collection called It's All Good. The Love banner there is from Felicity Jane. That's actually not gonna stay on there. At first I was toying with the idea of having a banner up atop. That torn piece of washi with the gold foil stars, I don't know where that's from. It is going to make it in my layout in several spots. The paper clip is Felicity Jane as well. Realizing that I don't wanna cover most of the stars by creating lots of layers behind my photo, which is already a fairly decent size, I printed it so that with the border, it's three and a half by four and three quarters. Because I didn't wanna take more space, I decided to back part of the cut file with this Mustard yellow cardstock, it is basil, it is the corduroy texture I like, but I don't think you can see much of the texture. I line the outer ring of big stars and the inner ring of little stars. Let's do a quick fast forward, and voila, it's all lined. Now I'm gonna start building some stuff up on top. I don't like too much blank space, so I felt like it could use something up above on the top left. So I tore a piece of what I call a little peekaboo and I put some of the washi on a white piece of cardstock and put it behind there. This set of puffy stickers is from Pink Fresh Studio. I pulled out the star because it's the perfect shade of mustard yellow. I also pulled out sequins. These are from Felicity Jane 
And what I like is all the Felicity Jane products seem to match because some of the gold products were a much brassier color rather than the mustard. But these sequins are nice mellow gold. And at first I scattered them everywhere, which just looks like a mess. And then I realized that the corner up above did not have much visual impact. I needed more of the yellow to balance out all the yellow at the bottom half of the layout. One idea I had was to put a strip of the cardstock up there, but I didn't want to do a whole strip and maybe one behind, and yet that wasn't really doing much because I wanted something with a little more pizzazz than just the cardstock. So I decided to do some more of the vellum and bring that into another area of the layout. That meant that I needed to seal up the torn edge, and you're going to see me have to patch this up quite a bit for a couple of reasons. But before I commit to that path, I decide to start gluing some stuff down. Uh, the first thing I do is that little die cut that says So Love, that is Felicity Jane from the Jill Kit. I decide to glue down some sequins in that little corner and... Then, before I get any further, I realize that I still need more contrast, and I decide to remist the top. I took everything off, recovered, and then just added some more spritz to add more saturation of white to those areas so that they would stand out a little bit more. By design, I covered up two of the stars along the torn line, but there was the third one at the far right that there wasn't anything I was going to cover up with, so I decided to spritz it completely. Although now that I look at it, I probably should have left it half spritzed on top and blank on the bottom to match the other ones, but it is what it is. So like I said, I was purposefully covering the stars that were halfway, halfway. I used a die cut and chipboard in the middle, a tag for the date on the other side, and then there'll be a little paper clip there actually. And then I go for the vellum at the top edge, and I don't know what I was thinking, but I ran it through my Xyron so that it would get sticky on the back, thinking probably I don't want the little roller dots to show through. And then I realized it's too flat. I want the dimension of it sticking out a little bit. At first I try ruffling it with my nail. I didn't like the puffy sticker down below, so I changed that out for a paper clip, and I come back and deal with the mess that's going to be this vellum. So I have to pull it up, which messes up the edge even further. And I use my powder tool to get the sticky off at least part way. I also cut another piece for the bottom right to have that vellum in a third spot. Nice visual triangle. I did briefly try the puffy title sparkle, but I wanted to concentrate your gaze at the middle of the layout. And that's why the die cut titles there. So I discarded the puffy stickers immediately. I pulled up the vellum at the top because I decided just that one layer vellum, it was too wide and I wanted a couple of layers of something there. But I jacked up, to use the Scrap Gals phrase, jacked up my background. So I needed to fix it. I used a gray pen that matched the tone of the gray cardstock and drew carefully along the white edges where the tear and the folds and sticky part had pulled up on the background. It didn't have to be perfect. It just had to cover up that stark white to mask it a little bit. And in person, under the vellum layers, you just can't even notice it, even though I know it was all messed up down there. This is the second project in a row that I had to fix a boo-boo with just a pen. The last one was a white. I had white cardstock I'd made splatters on and my thumb smeared one of the splatters. I just didn't like the look of it. I went with a white pen on it and it blended in with the white cardstock. You can't even see it. I'll go ahead and have a link pop up right now because that's a pretty good hack when you make a mistake on white cardstock. Back to what I'm doing on screen. I cut down the vellum layer, the top vellum layer with the flowers and I added strips of that golden foiled star washi underneath the layers. Then I'm trying to build clusters in those two spots. I pulled two more chipboard pieces, both Felicity Jane, 
and the top one just has the words. This bottom one, it was a polka dot, and I placed a die cut gray star on top of it. And I did want to add something more to this layout, something that would make the photo stand out, but I just didn't want to cover the stars. So I went for a plain vellum after trying out a few little bits and bobs. And I even tried out tearing the clear vellum, and in the end, I just cut it straight across. I don't even know if you noticed the plain vellum behind there. It just adds a little tiny bit. And since I have the gold starred washi in two spots at the top and bottom sides, I added some more beneath the photo, right underneath the date tag. That washi was a bit fiddly to work with. It curled very easily especially I think because I tore it and the gold foil if you handled it too much the gold foil started flaking off but it is a lovely effect having it just peek out underneath and have it sparkle the title was looking flat so at first I cut some foam to back it with to give it some more dimension and then the chipboard was gonna stick up further from that and I wasn't sure if I liked that after all but I did know that the puffy sticker above needed a little more dimension on the area that was off the chipboard because that chipboard was giving dimension to that side. Back to the title. I decided that it didn't really need more dimension per se. It needed something to help it stand out from the background. There's an area where it's gray on gray. And a little more texture to this layout wouldn't hurt either. I pulled out yellow thread that matches and this is the sulky 12 weight that I like to use a lot. And if you've watched other videos I've done, I sometimes use regular machine thread but I really prefer this because it makes stitching stand out. It also makes the little tangles of thread that you can tuck under things stand out better. I should do a my favorite things, my favorite supplies type of video with links to where you can buy it all. Let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in something like that. And what I like to do is wrap it around my fingers, like my four fingers, several times, maybe eight. And then I tease the loops out of the perfect circle into a tangle. You saw I had to redo that one because when I was putting the die cut back on and I decided it needed more adhesive, I tried putting a glue dot back there and the thread got stuck. It was a mess. So this picture was taken in 2007. That's my daughter Maya who is currently 13. She was just under two years old in this picture which was taken at my sister-in-law and brother-in-law's wedding. And most of the date stamps I have start later than that. I think the Becky Higgins one, it starts in 2008. But I do have the October afternoon. They came out with the decade roller stamps. So this one has the, all the 2000s, and I actually have the 1990s and the 1980s. You know, sadly, October afternoon is no more. But if you're interested in those, keep an eye out on eBay because you can find them there sometimes. Final step on this one is to add some sequins. I didn't want to have them on the stars because that didn't feel very natural. It felt like they would compete. And where do you put them? Do you put them in the center? Do you put them overlapping the edge? What do you do? It made more sense to put them in the three main clusters of embellishments. And then also I put a few right at the title area, just to fill in the blank space there. You see me take off the biggest one in that little spot, and I didn't catch it before I stopped filming, but I did put one there for the final photos. And to get those teeny tiny sequins in place, I used my EK Success tweezers, which are those reverse tweezers when you press they open and they're closed naturally and my favorite adhesive for wet stuff including adhering sequins it's the Liquitex matte medium and I'm using it in the fine line bottle I give this tip for everyone that has trouble with those fine line bottles this stuff is much more fluid than the Scotch Quick Dry, which is the popular adhesive to use. It's like the Ranger Matte Medium in strength and clear, dries completely matte, no shiny spots, but it is much cheaper and it works fabulously in the fine line bottles. Never have a clogging problem and don't have to hurt your hand fighting the bottle to squeeze some out.
Yeah, maybe I should do a favorite products or a review type video with some of the stuff that I keep mentioning. I talked over most of the close-ups, <laughs> but thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this layout and the tips. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet, and I will see you here next time.